Post a simple video on historic facts, and sometimes it punches folks in the cognitive dissonance and they get angry. So this response came from someone who was obviously perturbed by a video I did expressing the fact that when Jesus referred to Gehenna, Jesus was not actually referring to a mythical garbage dump outside Jerusalem, as we are often taught today, but was instead referring to the Valley of Gehinnom, which traditionally had a rather nasty reputation among Jews at the time because of what was written in Kings, the reforms of Josiah, and the prophecies of Jeremiah and Isaiah. And I have a few videos on that, so check them out. Now in these videos, I don't debate the existence of hell or anything like that. That's not the purpose of the videos. I merely put down the facts as we know them today regarding Gehenna, which was one of the four words translated as hell in the English language. Remember folks, the Bible was not written in English. What Gehenna is in scripture, the archaeological record, newer discoveries by historians, and the fact that the garbage dump idea didn't even emerge until popularized in the 12th century by a Spanish rabbi named David Kimji, a guy who'd never even had been to Jerusalem. That's a fact. I didn't come up with it. That's not my theory. There's loads of research on this, and this is the general consensus among archaeologists and scholars today. That's the historic record. But something about that video affected that viewer so much, they became a little unhinged and began name-calling, insulting channel followers, and randomly posting comments on a whole bunch of videos. I mean, which is fine. I mean, it's social media, but... This person didn't come up with counterfacts or arguments. They didn't offer anything else at all. They went straight to the insults and condemnation and name calling in a video about historic facts where I even talk about the love of Jesus. Additionally, it appears that they even have a grave misunderstanding about what a false prophet is according to the new covenant and Jesus himself in Matthew 7. But that's a whole other thing. So look, you're powerful to disagree with any opinion I may have. You may even choose to believe something differently than I do. And that's okay. We can disagree and still be friends and still have love and honor for one another. So guys, don't target this person. In fact, I've blotted out their name so you can't do it. Don't do to him what he does to others. He's trying to build interest in a social media channel. Let's just turn the other cheek. But his comments provide a great example of what we as Christ followers are not supposed to do. And as we're moving into the holiday season, which should be a season of good cheer and love for our fellow man, actually as a Christ follower, I'm called to do that every day, not just a certain time of year. I thought I'd send out a helpful PSA. The holidays, after all, are supposed to be a time of sharing and caring where the best parts of us as humans are supposed to be on display. But dang, if some people out there aren't just destined to be miserable, and worse, they try to take everyone else with them. I mean, make some posts about Jesus and how much Jesus loves, and watch the fur fly. Yeah, Jesus loves, but... No, there's no buts. The amount of hate I'm seeing in the comments of Christian folks' videos, shoot, mine and almost everybody else's videos, is crazy. If you claim to be a Christian, a little advice. Before levying judgments, you might need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Because there's a lot of wrecks out there. It's carnage. Jesus didn't say believe in traditions, believe in doctrine, believe in theologies, believe in round earth, flat earth, young creation, old creation, dispensationalism, Calvinism, Catholicism, rapturism, Protestantism, and a whole bunch of other isms, yada yada. Jesus said, believe in me. This is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. John 6.29 and that the world would know his disciples by their love for one another. So whenever we see comments by people who profess Jesus, it really all comes down to what kind of fruit these comments are producing to see what spirit they're really of. Well, what do I mean by that? <clears throat> so there's a crazy easy test to see what kind of fruit you're producing in your life and in those around you, your family, your friends, strangers on the internet. When the squeeze gets put on you, what comes out? When you see something you disagree with, when you see something that goes contrary to what you've been taught, when you see something that gets to you and triggers you, what happens when the squeeze gets put on? Oranges don't produce lemon juice. Apples don't produce lime juice. Pineapple juice doesn't come out of a garlic press. If, through your actions, you're responding with or spreading contempt, worry, fear, anger, indignation, persecution, impatience, disgust, annoyance, shame, pain, anxiety, or condemnation, you may need to check your heart position. Because if that's the juice that's coming out of you, you need to repent, i.e. renew your mind.
because the juice that's coming out of you when you respond that way is the juice from the world, not the kingdom of God. No matter how righteous you might think you are, it's out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth and the fingers speak. You may be the closest encounter someone has with Jesus today. We are to act accordingly. And don't hit me with the, well, Jesus rebuked the blase blase stuff and all that. And yeah, Jesus rebuked people for sure. And yeah, we can bring correction. And yeah, Jesus, he could be mean. But Jesus also gave himself, endured brutal torture and died for those same people. And he held those people with love and respect and honor in his heart when he did it. When Jesus said, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do, he wasn't just talking about his friends. He was asking for the centurions who tortured him and cast lots for his clothes, the Pharisees and Sadducees that falsely condemned him, Pilate who authorized the execution, the very ones who drove the nails into his body. Are you willing to do the same for those that you supposedly rebuke? Because that is what we're called to do when we picked up our own cross and followed him. So if you're not willing to die for those you rebuke, you're not moving with the spirit of Christ. You're moving with the spirit of religion. And you should check what seeds that you're planting and what fruit that you're producing. And that's why comments like those, they don't phase me. And they just make me feel even more compassion for people that sling them because they need a desperate encounter with Jesus. The fruit of the Spirit, and thus of the kingdom, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and what was that last one? Oh, that's right, self-control. That is what should come out when the squeeze gets placed on us. So folks, let's check the seeds we're spreading and watering and make sure our fruits are coming from the right Spirit no matter how righteous we think we are. Heaven is waiting for your response. And so are we. Be blessed. Happy holidays. See you soon.